In chapter 17, we're going to discuss sudden illnesses. There's a lot in this chapter, so these videos are going to be broken up into different sections. So let's first look at um, what happens when somebody becomes unresponsive. The, you know, you can look at things to see, well, how well is the brain functioning? There could be certain things to look for, and there's a mnemonic called STOP. S is for sugar, seizure, seizures, stroke, or shock. So you want to look at blood sugar sometimes falls too low, or a person has a seizure, could have a stroke, or could be in shock. Check their temperature. Too high can happen from a, a heat stroke or too low from hyperthermia, being, being that the person was out in the cold too long. Also check oxygen, you know, see if there is, um, the level of oxygen is okay, because if not, if it's inadequate, that could cause them to become unresponsive. And then there's P for poisoning or pressure on the brain. Sometimes a drug or alcohol overdose can cause that or carbon monoxide poisoning. And you could have a head injury, which could also cause pressure on the brain. So these are things to look at when we're thinking about why somebody becomes um, unresponsive. One thing that could happen is a person could have a heart attack because a vessel is clogged. As you can see in this picture, the narrowing of a vessel can cause blood flow to be disrupted and they can develop something called atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. And this could lead to a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. So things that you have to understand is a heart attack is when one or more of the arteries uh, becomes blocked, where cardiac arrest is when the heart stops beating, or sometimes the ventricles can develop an irregular rhythm, meaning they don't fully contract, they quiver. And this is known as ventricular fibrillation. Look for chest pain, sweating, lightheadedness, nausea, numbness, or tinging in the arm, tingling in the arm, shortness of breath, and fatigue for signs of a heart attack. What you can do is have the person sit, raise their knees, lean against a stable support, call 911, and loosen any tight clothing. If they take medication for the heart, let them take it, help them with that. If they're alert and they're able to swallow and they're not allergic, Give them an aspirin because that will help make the platelets less sticky so the blood can flow better and monitor their breathing. Sometimes they can have something called angina or angina, however you want to pronounce it, and that's where they get chest pain because they're not getting enough blood to the heart. It's not completely blocked, but it's narrowed. So what we look for is, um, you know, something that could happen when not enough blood gets to the heart because they exerted themselves too much or they got too excited or upset or after eating a very heavy meal and it's too hard to digest and the heart is working harder or if they're exposed to extreme temperatures and sometimes smoking cigarettes can cause angina or angina. Drugs that help are vasodilators. They open up the coronary arteries. Nitroglycerin is an example. So look for chest pain that is described as crushing or squeezing. It can spread to the jaw, the arms, or even in the back, the middle of the back. It lasts about three to 10 minutes and it's relieved by nitroglycerin. If they're having a full blown heart attack and it's really massive heart attack, nitroglycerin is not gonna help or may not help. So what do you do with someone having angina? Let them sit down, give them prescribed nitroglycerin and call 911 if they don't improve within five minutes. Another issue to look for, which is a sudden illness, is something called a stroke. It occurs when there's interruption to the brain with regard to the flow of blood. It's the same thing as a heart attack, only it's an attack on the brain. It occurs when the arteries either rupture or become blocked. So an ischemic stroke means there's not enough oxygen getting to the brain, vessels are narrowed, clogged with plaque usually. Hemorrhagic stroke happens when the vessels rupture. Transient, transient ischemic attack or TIA occurs when there's a lack of oxygen, but it does not result in permanent damage and usually resolves itself within 12 hours. You can have a number of these and sometimes those that have TIAs are, are more prone to developing a full stroke. Look for the mnemonic FAST, F-A-S-T, F is for face, A is for arms, S is for speech, T is for time. Um, call 911 immediately if you think someone is having a stroke. Monitor their breathing, position the person on his or her back, loosen the tight clothing, and turn the person onto his or her side if need be. So when you're thinking about um, 
strokes, also one thing to mention is, you know, when you're looking at someone's face, look to see if there's a droop. Check for slurred speech. You know, there are certain things you can look for. If they put their arms out in front of them and you ask them to hold their hands parallel to each other, if there's one lower than the other, these are signs of a stroke. So these are just things to keep in the back of your mind. In addition to stroke and heart attack, asthma is another sudden illness. It's a lung disease that, you know, you, has an inflammation that narrows the airways and you start having wheezing and chest tightness and shortness of breath and sometimes a cough. There are different triggers. Some of them are, are environmental, some of them are due to drugs or chemicals, and others are conditions or events, like a panic attack could trigger asthma, or household cleaning products can, can trigger it, or perfumes, or sometimes it's just cold air, um, you know, or animals, or it's tobacco smoke. So there are a lot of different triggers in Table 17 four goes over all of them. When you're looking for someone that has an asthma talk, attack, you'll notice frequent coughing and wheezing, chest tightness, shortness of breath, and their inability, they're unable to speak in full sentences, and their bre breathing and heart rate is very fast. Sometimes you'll see blue lips. What you should do is put them in a comfortable position, take slow deep breaths, and call 911 immediately if the person is struggling to breathe or talk or has blue lips, has no medicine to help them. Um, if the person does have medicine, ask about it, help them use their inhaler, and call 911 if there's no improvement. Hyperventilation is another condition that cause, causes fast and deep breathing. It comes on sometimes during emotional stress. It can also be caused by untreated diabetes if a person's in shock, poisons, brain swelling, and high altitude. Look for people that are having trouble breathing, they may have tingling or numbness of their hands and feet, and they're dizzy. You can calm and reassure the person to let them know that it's just hyperventilation and nothing serious. Take them to a quiet place and have them breathe slowly. Inhale through the nose, hold it for a full one to two seconds, and then exhale slowly through pursed lips. Another condition that can come on suddenly is COPD. It's a broad term for emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and other lung diseases, usually caused by cigarette smoking in people older, older than 60. Look for wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, and some people that use artificially supplied oxygen. So what you should do is assist the person to take medications, place them in comfortable position, seated, and encourage them to cough up secretions. Ask them to drink fluids and, you know, make sure you get medical assistance if there's acute breathing dis distress. So this is part one of chapter 17 and there'll be other videos to go over other uh, sudden illnesses that might occur.